In this video, I'm going to demonstrate creating an APA table. And the example I'm going to do for it uses multiple regression. I have this multiple regression output in the software's data, but it will look really similar in most softwares. And in this case, what I'm going to do is take this table right here, and I'm going to, from that, make an APA formatted table using APA 7. And I'm going to do that um, refinement in Excel because I feel like it's the easiest thing to do. Um, from Stata, I'm going to just um, select everything, click on Copy Table. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to open a new um, blank um, Excel worksheet. I'm going to bring it over there, and I'm going to paste my table in. So I've got all the data, everything I need now here in Excel. I just need to now format it to look like is required um, by APA 7th edition. The first thing I'm going to need is at the top, I'm going to need um, table number, like table 1, table 2. And then the next row is going to be my um, title. And I'm going to add those in um, in a minute. Um, once I've got established the width of the table and what I'm including and so forth. But when I do it, um, I'm going to need an extra row because I'm going to put two things there. So I'm going to um, add a row. Okay. So the first thing I usually do is go delete any blank rows or anything that I don't want to include in my table. So I'm going to delete that row. I'm going to delete that blank row. And... I'm going to delete that blank row, and um, you'll see that really I've got a little bit of a um, problem here, and then I've got this race, and then you know blank all the way across. So I'm going to go ahead and um, delete that row. And in this fictitious example, we're going to say that um, we used as a baseline group the white group and then group and that was group one group two we're going to call the black group and group three we're going to say is the asian group and that may or may not be reasonable here and um, i'm going to start by just kind of cleaning up these the the descriptions in these particular columns. A lot of people, a lot of students I find ignore doing that and just try to turn in something with this all looking messy how it was and that's not ideal. And we're going to have an intercept. Now be aware that in some softwares, a lot of softwares, the intercept or constant row will come first and and we want to, so I'm going, um, here it comes last in Stata. I'm going to move it first in just a minute. Also be aware that in some softwares, for example, in JASP software, we find that there's this H not model and H sub O, and I need to get rid of um, anything related to that. That's just really testing a model in which we don't have any of the variables included, okay, um, as kind of a baseline. So the other thing we're going to look here is gender. And it had a two dot, meaning that the comparison group was the two, so the baseline was the ones. In that case, it would be males. And I'm going to go ahead and capitalize H. So I want to clean that up. And now I've deleted the row before, so I probably shouldn't have, but I'm going to um, put it back in so that I can move this intercept row right up here. Okay, and and so now I've got at least the the basic data where I want it to be here. And you'll see um, this particular this particular column. I want to clean up, capitalize, so forth. Okay. The rest of this data, I'll show you how to deal with just a minute. Now let's deal with cleaning up this first row where we have the descriptions. What we're going to have here is basically this is going to be um, the name of. I'm going to, I want some descriptor here of the words that follow. Essentially, it's the, the variables included in the model. Okay. This right here is, um, these are the partial slopes or the, the basic, um, including, and the intercept, the coefficients is what that is brief for here. In your software, it may have a, a B, um, or something like that. 
And um, what we want to do is we want to put whatever is standard for APA 7, which is to have a lowercase b and we italicize it. Now, be aware that um, in an APA, um, we italicize statistical symbols, essentially. And so my lowercase b is most often used as a partial slope. And for standard error of, that, of those slopes, we use an SE, and that is also italicized. It's not really a symbol, but it's similar to a symbol. It's an abbreviation for, for what it is, and that's um, typically italicized. The T, meaning the T-test statistic, is also italicized. And this column is my p-value. Some softwares will have an SIG for a significance level, and that's just um, um, the same thing as a p-value. What we're going to do is change that to a lowercase b, p, and we're going to italicize it, okay? And over here, for our confidence intervals, okay, these are going to be my lower limits and my upper limit here. Oops, UL. Upper UL. I'm having trouble typing with that in there. And you'll know that those are telesized. That This was a case of Excel jumping in and trying to be smart and thinking on its own that those needed to be um, italicized, and they actually do. We do italicize those. And um, we're going to add something else here, which is um, what we call kind of a, oh, no, I forgot the word of it, spanner across these top. These both represent a 95% confidence interval, so I'm going to type in 95% CI here, and I'm not italicizing that. And I'm going to merge across these two cells. So I come up here and that merge in center, um, you know, you can drop down to see the options, but it is going to be centered. So I'll go ahead and hit merge and center there. Okay. All right. So, so that's what we, um, how we set it up. And I will need one additional row now up here because I've taken up a row with this little spanner here. So I'm going to now work on the centering. Um, I want to center most things, okay? Not everything, but most things. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and center. I want these um, labels for each of the columns to be centered. I want this to be centered across here. And I do not center these when you have this kind of text in the first column, you typically don't center it. It would look weird if you did, and we, we don't do it. We keep it left aligned. And then I'm going to center all of the data. We're also going to clean up um, the number of decimal places in just a minute, but kind of taking one thing at a time. Okay, so, so I've got everything, all the information here I want in my particular table. I can adjust my column widths now. I, maybe I wouldn't do it till I to did adjust in my rounding, but you can do that at any time. The one that you'd most likely want to adjust is probably this first one, depending on how long these descriptive terms are. And then I'm going to put at the top table, let's say this is table three in our paper. And that is bold. And then I'm going to put here um, a um, title for my table, okay, regression output for um, uh, some score, the summed score, and it, whatever it is in your particular case, however you want to describe it is fine. And I'm going to go ahead and now tell us that it's not bold but italicized. And you notice this is all in capitals case. You capitalize the way you capitalize the title of a book. And um, bold here, but not italicized. Italicized here, but not bold. And then the other thing that you um, is often helpful to do is to spread across, I mean select across the last column. And you want to merge there, but not center, because it's not going to be centered. Merge across. So make that all one cell sometimes can help when you're with copying and pasting things into Word when you're done, or you may have other little problems if you don't, if you don't select that all as so it's one cell. Okay, so we've got a lot of things put in here, okay? 
And what I want to do now, next I'll, I'll tackle the rounding. The, the rule for APA is we want to round to two digits to the right of the decimal point, except p-values are three. And um, we make an exception if um, for some reason we're working in units on such a scale that I need more decimal points than that to, to really show what I'm trying to show. But this is the general guideline. And so the way I do it is I go ahead and I selected all the data. I'm going to put everything to two digits. It's usually easiest to just do that. And then I'll go back and fix this column here. Um, to make that three. And I do use these two buttons up here are the easiest way to deal with it. You notice one of them expands the number of digits and the other one decreases the number of digits. I'm going to go ahead and decrease those all to two. Then I'll select just the P column and increase that back to three. So I'm going to everything rounded to two digits, set the P values to three, and everything is centered, okay, except for the title and the table number and these um, names of the variables here. For the most part, everything is centered. So everything's pretty well where it needs to be now. Notice these things are not bold. This is not bold. This is not bold. Nothing in here is bold. However, if you wanted to, you could bold an item to call attention to it, and then you would make a note about that at the bottom. At the bottom of the table, and we're going to do some lines here in a minute, you can, you can type in the note. Um, the, if you have a note, you type it like that, note. And then um, you italicize the word note, but not the actual thing you type after it. And then this can this note can be really a description as long as you want it to, to be. You know, um, this included the um, 267 observations that, and you you can say whatever you want to about it there. Okay, so you can have any kind of a long description that is useful to you. Sometimes it's helpful to, let suppose you wanted to put an, an asterisk next to something um, to, to further explain it. Anything in the whole table, any of these values, these, anything you want, you could use a, an asterisk to explain, or you could use a superscript. Um, to and then refer to it down here. So for example, I might say, um, I might put a superscript A, so I've got to type in A, and then I come here, and I'm going to go to font, whoops, well, when I do that, I, I start off with um, having a problem because now it thinks that this is all text because I put an A there. So once I do that, I have to manually round, okay, so I manually rounded it, okay, I'm just going to go ahead and, um, and, and if you want to tell it it's text with, um, you put this single quote in front of something and that tells it that's text. I didn't mean that to be treated as a number, treat it as text. And then I'm just going to highlight the A and put superscript here. Okay, and you see that that single quote thing didn't show up. So I can do that, you know, and then as part of my note here, I'm going to, um, um, on the next row of it, I'm going to do an A that I've superscripted again. Let me go and write the information first, otherwise I could get it mixed up. Um, and, you know, I don't know, where did I put it? I put in the lower limit for Asian for this group, something, something. I'm going to want to say something about it, okay? So then I come here and I'm going to come and take my A and I'm going to superscript my A and so forth. So, so I have some description of what that means. So that's just a continuation really in the note. Now what I also want to do is just like I did with a title, I want to merge across, not centering, but just merge across, and that makes things, you know, not become a problem. And then I'll do the same thing with this particular row. And so I've got my note and so forth here, okay? And I could just use a, uh, instead of putting this as a separate one, I could just 
have and you know extend it on from what I wrote here and um, let it wrap around get choose the wrap text option so it would wrap around so that that would be another option but at any rate I've got all the information here now I'm going to deal with lines with APA format you never want a, a vertical line up and down line never you only want horizontal lines there are a few places you need to have them and then there's some other places you can have them if you want I always want it underneath the title okay now please note up here that there's that single bottom border and a thick bottom border typically just use the single bottom border and make sure you do that the same for everywhere in the table the same one if you're copying a table from software that that pulls those some lines already then you may need to adjust them okay and then what I'm going to do is because I have this spanner here I'm going to put one there underneath the spanner so I have one underneath the title if I have any spanners like that I will have a horizontal line under it I'm going to have one underneath my column labels okay and I'm going to have one at the bottom of the table itself not including the notes those are the required places to have it okay you may put in more horizontal lines conservatively like don't overdo it don't put a horizontal line under every one of these but if it's helpful like say you have a huge table and you want to break up sections with a few more horizontal lines to separate sections you can do that okay but just don't just don't um overdue and that's my basic table now it's ready to go and I can copy and paste it now there's you know there's um, a link also below in the show notes to sample tables which will give you sample tables of different types um, that are really common for example using um, t-tests or demographic characteristics or correlations so some of the things that you might do most often and there's even an example of using um, a qualitative table where you're you're putting some of the information you got of a qualitative analysis into table format so you can look at that down the link below and these are those are just links from from um, apa style dot apa and i'll i'll have those below for you